Okay, hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about a uh, <clears throat> sometimes an underappreciated and underused app that is built into the operating system of every Macintosh computer. Uh, the app is called Preview. Now, Preview uh, does not exist on iOS devices. Many of the same uh, tasks and features that you can do with Preview, you can do on the iOS devices uh, using other methods. But today I'm specifically going to talk about using Preview on the Apple computer. So this covers all the MacBooks, iMacs, any desktop computer or laptop computer that Apple makes has Preview built in. And again, it is in the Applications folder. So now we will begin and I will show you what exactly is uh, happening with uh, Preview. Okay, so a little bit about me first. If you, if you haven't met me before, I've been using Apple computers uh, since 1986. I was taking journalism and uh, English classes at Northern Kentucky University, and uh, that's where I got introduced to the Apple computer. And these were the Mac SEs with the, uh, you know, the three and a half inch floppy, and I have never owned a PC since. So I stay certified with Apple, um, and I provide on-site and both remote support in Naples and anywhere in the world now that Zoom and uh, screen sharing is a thing. And I have both residential and business clients that I assist. So I call Preview the Swiss army knife of software. It can open, create, and convert various file types. As I said before, Preview resides in the applications folder I always keep it in the dock for quicker access. So you, as you know, you can drag any application down to the dock. Preview is always in my dock all the time, just to make it easy to get to. Scanning with Preview is the easiest and fastest way to scan. So depending on your method of scanning now, with two or three clicks, you can scan in Preview without using any third-party software, any buttons on the scanner, and you can do it directly from your computer, and I'll review that. And we'll talk about how to edit photos with Preview, which is fast and easy. It's not a uh, full photo editor like Photoshop, but it does have some very useful tools that we'll review today. So one thing, the one of the first things you may want to do is make Preview the default PDF reader. So if you have ever installed anything like Adobe Acrobat or PDF Expert or any other PDF software that may have, uh, you know, come your way through a, through a website or a recommendation, what happens is it often sets itself for the default reader for PDF files. So unless you change your default PDF reader back to preview, if you're using something else, a lot of these functions today and tricks that we're learning do not apply to other third-party software. So the way to change the preview back to your default, if it's not, is in any finder window, you can locate a single PDF file. It can be in your downloads folder. It could be a bank statement, a boarding pass. So any PDF file that you can find in a finder window. And then what you'll do is you'll select that file and either hit command I or click on the file menu and say get info. And this will bring up a little dialog box about the uh, preview and such. So there's a section called open with there. And when you click open with, yeah, you'll be able are to select. You, I'm sorry, are you showing, just, are you just reading the slide or showing this? I'm gonna show it after I explain oh, it. Okay, all right, so, all right, go ahead. So yeah, sorry. so after you choose the file and open with, then you'll click change all. And now preview is the default app again for opening the PDF files. So one moment, and I'll show you what that looks like. Well, I'll actually show you that window in a moment because it got out of place here. But, but yeah, so basically when you get info on the file, it'll bring up the little dialog box. There's a section called Open With, and then you'll choose Preview from the Open With dialog. So... Now I wanna cover a little bit about the preview interface and toolbar. So when you open a document in preview, this is the menu bar you will see at the top. The title of the, you see there, Macintosh HD space was the title of the file that I had opened. I was uh, 
taking screenshots to keep my uh, control of my space used on my hard drive. So this is one of the screenshots I took. That's why it says Macintosh HD space. That could very well say 5255 JPEG or any file that you open in preview. So first of all, you have the view menu. So the view menu is the menu that lets you choose the sidebar, turning it on or off, where you can use thumbnails. So as you'll see in a moment, when you're in preview, you have the option to show thumbnails of the pages on the side, just like you get when you're in a print dialog box or uh, some other apps that show thumbnails on the side. So that will let you, that view menu lets you navigate through the thumbnails. To the right of that, you have the inspector button. The inspector will give you information about the file. It'll give you the file size, the type, the date created, the date modified, and all the information about the file itself. Uh, you know, if it's an image, you'll get the dimensions in pixels and inches. So the inspector button will give you all the details you need to know about the preview file that you're in. Uh, to the right of that, you have magnification icons to let you zoom in and zoom out. You can also use Command Plus to zoom in and zoom out like you can on many other Mac apps. So whichever way you do it, through the menu bar, through the view menu, or through the keyboard, you can zoom in and out on, an, on a document if you want to focus on a certain area of a photo or a PDF file. You then have your share button, which is common to many iOS and Mac apps, where you can send this to mail or some kind of social media if you use Twitter or Facebook, as well as messages. And sometimes you'll get the option to share it to photos if it's a photo. The highlight menu is another option. So when you open a PDF document, say you've got a contract that you're looking at and you wanna highlight some certain areas. So that will let you highlight a document. Also at the bottom of that menu that we'll see in a few minutes, you'll also get the option to insert a signature, which we can also do in preview with other ways. So we'll really cover that because that's a very useful tool of preview is inserting your signature onto a PDF so that you can sign it without having to scan it after you've signed it and then get it back into the computer. The rotate button is a button that will flip an image. So sometimes you'll get an image that's sideways or upside down. That rotate button will rotate the, it counterclockwise counter each time you click it. And a trick is if you want it to rotate clockwise to the right, if you hold the option key when you click it, it will rotate in the other direction. So the rotate key command goes counterclockwise by default, but if you hold the option key, you can make it go clockwise. And then the markup toolbar is next, which is that little, it looks like a little marker tip inside a circle. That opens up a big range of tools that I'm gonna cover in a moment that will let you edit and mark up documents like beyond belief. It's, it's pretty incredible what you can do. And then the search field uses the spotlight technology, which can search text in a PDF. So if you're looking at a contract and, uh, or a, let's say a, a cookbook, you've got a PDF cookbook and you wanna find a lasagna recipe. If you type lasagna in that box, it will find the recipe that has the word lasagna in it. If you're looking for something that contains garlic, it will show you all the instances where garlic turns up in the recipe or cookbook file that you're looking at. If you're looking at a contract, you could type in a word that you're looking for in the contract. So the, the search function in preview can search within text of a document as well. So just like Spotlight, if you're looking for a letter uh, in Spotlight that you wrote to your aunt you know, 30 years ago and you've got it on your computer, even if you don't know what you titled it, if you type in some text from the letter, that spotlight technology can isolate a document based on text within the document. So that same powerful search engine is used in the preview search. And it's right in the toolbar of every document. It doesn't work on images, obviously, but any, any document where you have text, you can search for text within a document, whether it's five pages or 105 pages to let you find it. Now, ways to view PDFs and images on the preview in Mac. 
So basically, <clears throat> when you open a PDF with multiple pages, you can view thumbnails of all the pages in the sidebar. So again, you can choose the view thumbnails or view contact sheet, depending on the, the layout of the document. If there's a table of contents under the view menu, there will be a table of contents option. You can choose view hide sidebar. Another option is pages in a continuous scroll. So if you choose view continuous scroll, that will put the pages like all together in one long, like a, an endless newspaper almost where all the pages are kind of connected without little breaks in between. You can also choose one page at a time or two pages side by side. So view single page or view two pages will let you choose the layout of the screen. Now, if you have a 13 inch MacBook, you might want to not want to do two pages side by side, but if you have a 27 inch iMac or even a 24 inch iMac, you, the two page view might fit your screen a little better. And again, to scroll through pages, you can either use the arrow, you can use the scroll bar on the side, or you can use your cursor or two fingers on the trackpad to scroll just like in other apps. So that's how you, you can look at items on a Mac. So again, to go to a specific page, you can click on a thumbnail in the left column, or you can choose the go menu and type in a specific page. So if you know you need something on page 87, and you don't want to scroll through, which takes a little more time, you can click on the go menu and say, insert a page number and jump right to 87 quickly. So there's a previous button and a next button in the preview toolbar when you're in a multiple page document. It won't happen if you're in a single image, but if you are in a document that has multiple pages, there will be a back and a forward button, just like in Safari. So if you don't see that, you can go to view, customize toolbar and add those. But with any multiple page preview documents, you should see a back and forward button. And again, if you are you have a Mac with the force touch trackpad, either built into a laptop or a external trackpad, you can press and hold the pages to kind of scroll through them quickly. So if you kind of push your finger down, and press and hold, the more firmly you press, the faster the pages will rotate through. So there's many ways to navigate preview documents once they're up on the page. And when you have a multiple page document, these tricks will come in handy. Now, again, we talked about the thumbnails. So in the preview app, you can choose, as you see in the example here, the thumbnails are pretty large. You've got the, the thumbnail in the market, the second page there, that's pretty large. So you can choose view thumbnails, and then there's a little sidebar uh, control, you know, a little toggle that you can slide left to right to make the thumbnails or stronger. Now, if your thumbnails are small, really small, there will be an arrow next to the file name on the right that uh, I don't know if we can see it in this picture. Let me see if I can see. So yeah, so the, the, you'll see an arrow to the right of, of the file name if the PDFs are shrunk that you can expand them with. Now again, to zoom in or out of, of the preview. So let me go here. And so you can either choose view, zoom in or out. You can pinch and squeeze your trackpad You know, with that gesture. You can either pinch in or pinch out to zoom in or out. You can choose view actual size. Now, under there's a way you can also zoom in on a particular section of a PDF or image. So for example, if you have a contract that has some really small fine print on it or something that's almost even too small to read, sometimes you'll see these kind of documents. You can, under the tools menu, you can drag a rectangular selection around that, which I'll show you in a moment. And then you can choose the view menu and zoom to selection and it will zoom in on that section that you've selected. So another thing you can do is in the scale field of the, view, of the uh, toolbar, you can type a percentage in and go to 150% or 75% if it's a large document. So you can zoom in and out many ways. If you don't see the scale field, you can go to choose uh, the view menu again, customize toolbar and drag the scale 
field back up to the toolbar and preview. Another way to zoom in on an option is preview has a magnifier. So under the tools menu, there's a show magnifier and you'll get a little loop on the screen that you can drag around to zoom in on the item under the magnifying glass. And you can use the escape key or choose tools hide magnifier to turn that off. Jeff, can I pause you for a second? Yes. Because we have a um, we have an issue coming out of the chat. Uh, our attendees are trying to understand if you at some point will be doing a live demonstration of preview showing some of the things that you are going over right now. Yes, I'll do I'll do that momentarily. Oh. So okay. All right. Okay. So hopefully that answers all of the questions that are coming into the chat. Jeff is going to do a live presentation. He's just covering the in the items right now that he's um, that are on his slides. So thank you for right. your so yeah I'm doing the slides first and then I'm going to do some uh, preview uh, tips afterwards in a moment. Oh. So all right, thank I'm you everyone. Share a preview with you and show you that exactly. All right, so. thank you Jeff and thank you everyone. All right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So one moment, let me get back to this was this was it I believe. Okay, so, okay, are you still seeing the screen? Yes. Okay, so again, um, we talked about searching for preview. And if you wanted to look for an exact phrase, you can put the phrase in quotes, just like you can in Google. So if you wanna search for a specific uh, vegan lasagna recipe, if you type vegan lasagna in quotes, it will search for only that exact phrase rather than just lasagna, which might show up other options that you're not using for. So again, in the search fields, you can click the next or previous to go to the next field that it found in search. You can sort the search results by number of matches. So if you're looking for lasagna and there are 16 recipes for lasagna, you can do that. And you can search by the pages that they appear on. So whenever you're finished with any search, you can click that delete button and it will let you uh, clear out the search. So while that is happening, what I want to do is show you a sample of some of the things we've been talking about. So let me go to preview here. Just one second, let me get preview open. Okay, I'll cover that in a moment. So let me get let me get through a couple more slides, and then I'll do some samples to show you the things that I've been doing. So another thing that we talked about, if you were in the uh, Monterey class, one of the features that came out uh, in the the last version and two of software is a feature called live text. So when you're in preview, if you're looking at a photo like you see here that contains text, you'll notice that you can copy that text, you can drag over it, you'll get the option to call that number to FaceTime a phone number that was in an image here. You could go to the website that's in the picture. You can uh, translate to another language, you can look something up. So these are really some neat features that Apple has built in to multiple apps on the uh, Mac operating system and on iOS as well, that you can actually inter interact with text that's in a photo. So that full functionality comes to preview. So if you took a picture, this morning I was behind a, a van with an electrical, uh, it was an electrician. And uh, we had an electrician that left town. So I saw another van, I took a picture of it. I could copy that and paste it into my address book from the picture. So if I need an electrician, I've got one that I, I saw on the road. So the, the, the implications of this are, are massive just because you have so much more you can do with pictures, as you can see here, that you could never do before. And um, one of the things that's uh, supposed to come out with iOS 16 in a few weeks is even live text 
captioning. So if you're in a FaceTime call, you'll be able to see the words at the bottom of the screen of the, the person uh, you know, talking just like you would a closed caption movie. So that's something that's, that's gonna be introduced apparently with the, the new iOS and then the Mac OS where you have a lot more control over the content that you see based on uh, factors that are in play. So again, to interact with text in a photo using live text, you put your cursor over the text and then you can drag over it to select it. You can copy it. You can control click it and look it up. You can translate it. So again, translation is available in all languages yet. It may not be available all the time, but when there is a translate option available, it will show it. You can hit search. So any of these control clicks are the same as a right click or a two finger click on the keyboard. You can share text. You can call a phone number, uh, contact an email address, add it to contacts, go to a website. So all these things can be done just by zooming over text that is in an image that you have open in preview. Now, if you have a multiple page preview document, there may come a time where you wanna bookmark a page rather than just highlighting text on the page. So in the preview app on your Mac, you can open the PDF that you wanna bookmark. And um, I think this only works with documents, which makes sense, and they have to have a few pages. I don't think you can have just a single page document and create a bookmark on it because the, the menu doesn't appear. So you can either choose the under the tools menu, you can add a bookmark. And then if you want to view your bookmarks in a list, if you choose view look bookmarks or view bookmarks, it'll show you a little list of the bookmarks that you've created so far and the pages they're on. And then if you click on one of those bookmarks, it'll jump to that page. So again, that bookmark sidebar will be next to your thumbnail sidebar. So you can either choose view, hide sidebar, thumbnails. So the bookmarks will be alongside the thumbnails and you can control click a bookmark to delete it. So again, this tells you a little bit about preview and what the different menus will do for it. Let me see if I can get. So the tool, general info is general information about a PDF or image. More info will tell you more information about different formats, when a photo was taken, where it was taken, if it was taken with an iPhone or a smart camera that has, uh, you know, geotagging on it, you could see that. You can look for a keywords inspector, which will give you keywords assigned to a PDF or image. Sometimes people will label images and you, preview will let you see the words that someone has assigned to an image if they did so. So the encryption information, if there's encryption information or pat permission information for a PDF, you can, you can see that there. Crop, you can do a crop inspector if you've noticed something that's cropped you can see that and then annotations made so you can see annotations that are in the image so a lot of these again i'll show you in a few minutes of all the ways we can use this in preview but i'm giving you an overview now now one of the most things that i use preview for probably 50 percent of the times i use preview um is scanning and the other 50 percent is signing documents and the other, well, it's probably 48% scanning, 48% documents, and the other 4% is other basic photo editing and cropping. But signing a document and scanning are the two things that are, you'll find preview very useful for. So one of the things now that I want to cover is how you can sign documents with your computer. So this is very to set, easy to set up with either a blank sheet of white paper or your iOS device. The trackpad can be used to create a signature. It's a little more difficult. So I'm gonna, I'll show you how that works, but it's not as easy as it, as it looks. And then uh, I will show you how to insert those into documents. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that the markup toolbar is revealed. So when you're in preview, 
This symbol that you see here, the markup symbol, is what you click to hide and show the toolbar that will let you add a signature and do other editing things to a document. So that markup symbol, if you don't see a row of items there that I'll show you in a moment, you'll see that, uh, that symbol will toggle that menu bar on and off. <clears throat> so after you've revealed the markup toolbar, then you can click the signature icon to create signatures. So the signature icon looks like that little J there next to the X. And I've created signatures for my full name, both printed and in script. I've done my initials printed in script because sometimes you'll see a document that says initial here or sign here, print your name here. So I've done that for myself and my wife. This way, no matter what they throw at you, as far as we need your initials here and your document here and sign your name here and print it here, you can enter that all with a couple of clicks once you've got in there. Another neat thing about this is these signatures sync with your iOS devices. So through iCloud, if, you, if you're signed into the same iCloud device on your iPad, your laptop, your Mac, and your phone, any signatures that you put in your phone will be available on all your other devices and vice versa. So to add a new signature, make sure the markup toolbar is visible and then click the signature tool. You'll then take a clean white sheet of paper and sign your name in black ink, as you're seeing here. <clears throat> so basically, you'll take a clean white sheet of paper. If it has lines on it, it kind of messes it up. So you want to get a clean white sheet of printer paper, sign your name in black ink, just like you see. And then you'll click on that signature icon that I showed you, the little J with, next to the X. And then you'll hold the paper up to the camera on your Mac so that it can see the signature you just drew. So you're gonna see me doing that here to show you how it looks. And it's kind of hard to see holding up a piece of paper. You know, you've got a piece of paper and uh, you're holding it up in front of the camera like this. And uh, well, with the green screen, it doesn't work too well, but you're trying to hold it up. So you kind of have to peek your head around the side to see what you're seeing in the screen. So the way that works is... So to sign a document, you choose camera at the top, and then you hold the piece of paper with your signature up near the line there. And then when it looks okay, you hit done. And then that signature is at the top of the list. So basically, when, you, when you're hovering that piece of paper over the, the camera there, Preview automatically rotates it so that it looks right, even though it's looking at it backwards, it rotates it. And that what you saw there, you saw it kind of flip the signature around. And then there's a little line there, a vertical line that you saw that was kind of the, the basis for what you wanna set your signature on. If that was the line that was on a piece of paper, for example, that you had to sign on, that way you can kind of drag your signature into the proper place on a form. So that's how you get your signatures in. And again, on a plain white piece of paper, I wrote my name, I signed it, I printed it, I printed my initials, I did my initials in script, and I did the same for my wife. And that way, we're never without a signature if we need to sign a document on the fly or something. Now, again, here's some different markup toolbar options, and you'll see an image of this in just a moment. So you have a text selection tool. So when working with a PDF document, you can use a text selection tool to drag over text, to copy, paste. Well, you can't paste, but you can copy text directly from a preview document. And obviously this doesn't work with images. So the selection tool will let you select part of an image or even a document with a lasso and a smart lasso that can, that can get edges out of a document and stuff. Now, when you're with a PDF, that only becomes a rectangular selection tool to like grab a paragraph or something. You cannot uh, use a lasso on a PDF, but you can use it on an image. Instant Alpha, which you might be familiar with, with uh, Pages or uh, Keynote has this feature. That will let you clear out the background of an image that you have in there. 
So a lot of the times you might have an image that's, uh, you know, you've got an image of an Apple logo and it's on a, a blue background, but you want it on a white or clear background. With the Instant Alpha, you can drag over that and I'll show you how this works in a moment. <clears throat> and you can uh, then clear out the background of an image, save that or copy and paste it and, and, and put it somewhere. So shape tools, you can add rectangle stars and other shapes. So the tools um, have arrows, which you can, you can resize them easily. Um, the sketch tool, so depending on if you are, are, are drawing uh, kind of like freehand, if you have a Mac with a trackpad, either a desktop or a laptop, you can use it kind of like an Apple Pencil on an iPad. The, the, if you want to sketch something, the harder you press, the thicker the line gets, and the lighter you press, the lighter the line. So it has the same sensitivity that other devices might have in reaction to pressure paste on, uh, placed on the touchpad in order to make a line thicker or narrower, for example. And again, there's a text tool which lets you enter text on a form. So for example, I talked earlier about filling out a form and um, we just filled out our passport renewal forms and I used preview for the whole thing and I type text in and I'm gonna show you how that works in a moment. Um, the signing the documents, we saw that sign symbol earlier and that's the one that lets you sign documents if possible. And uh, most PDFs have no problems with adding a signature. I've never opened a PDF that I could not sign. It's a little different than if you get taken to a website for DocuSign, where that's a, a web-based app and they kind of just give you a generic signature that you have to fill out. But this is just for PDFs that you have local on your computer, not a web-based or anything, because they kind of have different parameters for the requirements for signing and such. So adjusting color. So again, um, and I'll, I'll show you an example of this in a moment, but the color has different adjustment sliders for exposure, contrast, shadow, saturation, color, temperature, making a picture sepia or black and white, sharpness, tint. Um, there's a line tool where you can change the line thickness of a box or a rectangle or a square or a triangle, a shape that you put in. You can change border colors. You can change the color of the shape. So a shape will have both a border color, which might be gray, and the inside of the shape might be white, but you can change both the color and the line to be gray or white using the border color and the change color. And then there's a font button where you can change the font size and style from underlined, to italic and such, just like you could in other apps for forms that you might fill out. So sometimes you might notice that forms need a 12 point font and sometimes they might need an eight point font. So you can do all that in preview with the font menu after you've inserted some text. So another thing preview is for, so let's say someone sends you a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, but you don't have Photoshop. Well, you can open that with preview. Preview can open JPEGs, it can open TIFFs, it can open Photoshop, it can open EPS files, it can open almost any image file that you can throw at it, it can open it, and it will open it in as a Photoshop file, but then you can export it to another type of file. So here's a, a PSD file. This is the back of my business card. And you can see there it says uh, PSD, which is a Photoshop document. And then when I hit save as, as you see there, I can either say, save it as a PNG, for example. I can save it as a JPEG. You know, they're HEIC, JPEG, JPEG 2000. You know, all those options are available for converting a file, even though it was originally a Photoshop file, I can switch it to any of these documents so that I can send it on to someone else and they'll have no problem opening it. So you see all those options are available for saving and converting documents. And Preview can even open 3D modeling renders. So if someone has sent you a uh, file that looks like a, it's a it got some weird TGZ or something at the end. And it's actually a 3D modeling, you know, for printing 3D prints and stuff. 
it can open that and you can actually drag it around and rotate it in all planes. So preview is, is beyond powerful in, in many different uh, ways that it can open 3D modeling files and you can spin them around left, right, up and down and on all axes, which is pretty incredible that it, all this stuff is built into it. Now, if you're used to copying and pasting, you, you probably know that um, when you copy something, it goes to a little invisible place on your computer called the clipboard. And then when you paste, it pastes from the clipboard into the document or place that you're using it. So if you ever copy something, you can choose and you wanna get it into preview, you can either do command N or file open new from clipboard and it will automatically put the document that you copied into a new preview document. So you can directly paste into a, uh, a copied document into preview using the, the new from clipboard command under the open menu, which is a really neat little tool. So let's see, I've copied an image here, you see, from this presentation. So I copied the little preview icon. I'm going down to preview. I said new from clipboard. And do you see how clean that image is? So that's how you can copy and paste from preview. So I copied it from Keynote. I went to preview. I hit new from clipboard. And look, there's a clean, no background image of the preview logo. So that's a really neat tool that is built in to preview. I mentioned earlier about editing PDF forms. So when you open up a PDF in preview, there's a whole toolbar to help you fill out these blank boxes. So remember earlier, we talked about that markup icon. This is where that comes into play. So basically you won't see that bar that's the across here, unless you've clicked the markup icon here. So if you don't see these items here for the text box, the, the shapes, the signature icon, click the markup bar to reveal that. So see how that markup bar toggles that on and off. So if you wanted to enter text, you can watch the video here. And this is where I've clicked the text box field there that we discussed earlier. And this is where I can put yes in all these check boxes I need to. Now a trick is if you enter the text box and you check yes, or you put an X there, if you hold the option key, you can drag the, you can copy an item. So there's text. So watch what I do here. I type in my name and then I use the option key and I'm gonna drag that that was my first name. So I'm going to drag Boar down, but then I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to type Jeff. Then I'm going to drag Jeff down and I'm going to put my middle name over there. You know, so you don't have to go up and click the text box every time. You can click the text box, insert a text field, and then just kind of drag that around using the option key to copy it so that you can fill in different forms without having to go to the top, click text every time. You know, so this is a quick way to use preview to fill out a form that's nice, neat, and you can save it rather than filling it out by hand and, uh, you know, possibly losing it. This is saved on my computer forever. Now, one thing with preview is that when you edit a document like this, unless you duplicate it first. So if you want to keep a blank passport renewal application on hand, you would go to the file menu and duplicate it before you made these edits. Because once you make edits to this PDF and I close the file, it will automatically save. I can't go in and remove this, these fields after the fact. So make sure that if you're using a document that you might want to keep a clean copy of, make sure that you duplicate it first. Otherwise, you'd have to go back to the source, you know, the... Uh, Department of State website and download a new form, for example, for a passport renewal. So remember to duplicate it before you um, make any edits that you won't be able to undo. Because once these words are on here, I can't go in later and change anything. You'd have to basically start from scratch. Now, again, 
I mentioned earlier, Preview is no match for software like Photoshop, but there are some basic editing tools that you can really use. So I'm going to show you how you can remove a background from an image. And it works a lot better sometimes with a, with a big variance in the contrast between the image and the background. I don't know if it worked together on like a forest where you had a, uh, you know, a cab in front of a forest. I don't think it could remove the cabin from the forest or anything. That would be more of a Photoshop tool. But you'll watch what I do on this logo here, and it really does happen smoothly. So basically, that instant alpha symbol is that symbol uh, to the left right here. So you have the selections tool, and then you have this instant alpha tool. That's what I click on to remove the background. So if you watch here, I click on the instant alpha symbol and then I drag in the area of the white that I wanna remove. And then you have to kind of drag in the areas that aren't touching. So do you see that I'm dragging around the kind of the inside letters in the logo that are not touching the outside? So you'll see there when I drag over those, they kind of become grayed out too, which means that it's actually removing the background. So now I've got a, a copy of my, my business logo that I've saved and it has a clear background. So I can export that as a PNG. So just for your information, if it's a PNG file, you can have a clear background in it, a JPEG, or even a Photoshop file or a TIFF will keep a white or sometimes black background depending on the app settings. But if you want to have transparency in a background, you want to save it as a PNG file because any other file format is going to put a generic background in there, usually white, and you won't get the effect that you want. So remember, uh, save it as a PNG if it has transparency. Jeff, now, you have again, a question. Yes. You have a question. Is Instant Alpha only available in Monterey or was it available in previous iterations of Preview? I think it was in the previous version. I think it was in iOS 12, but I don't think it was in I don't think it was in like Yosemite. All right. Thank you. I think I think it's fairly new. I think it might have either it came with Monterey or it came with the prior operating system. But it wasn't there like five years ago. So if you if you see it now and it wasn't there before, that's that's a new thing. I think I think the instant alpha might have just come in the last year or two. Actually, so again, I think I think it's been longer than that. Um, it's been around for quite a while. I know it's been around in pages and stuff, but I, I couldn't remember. I don't know if I ever used it in preview before. All right, thank you. We have uh, responses in the chat. Take a look at the chat, everyone. Thank you, Jeff. All yours. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. Uh, oh no, it's it's been around for a few years, but it was gone in. Uh, in Mojave, it wasn't there, but they put it back afterwards, apparently. So. Now what I want to do is show you some of the tools that you yeah. can use with the editing features of Preview. So they changed the icon in here, but it's the icon that looks like the three little sliders there. Um, it used to be like a, a triangle, but they changed it to like one of those little, uh, you know, slider icons. So it kind of looks like uh, little sideways temperature icons. And when you click on that, you'll see a menu like this that comes up that you can locate around and then you can drag and you'll see the image in the background is changing as I, as I move these sliders so that you can edit some of the aspects of a photo like contrast, uh, highlights, you know, to tweak something. Here's shadows, saturation, you know, to make it black and white or full color. Temperature makes it warmer or cooler. Tint, if you want to put a tint. Sepia, if you want to make it grayscale or that, you know, and sharpness will either blur or sharpen up the details. So you can get some 
pretty good editing there with images by using that tool, which is also in preview. Now, if you open a PDF in preview, you can add or remove pages. So let's say you had a 10 page contract and then you had a contract from last year um, that you wanted to use one of the pages from for preview. So you could either do a couple of things. You can choose the edit menu and under insert, you can choose a page from a file. It will let you choose another PDF and then you can select a page or multiple pages from that PDF and insert them into the document. Or you can open two PDFs. If you have a big enough screen where you can see two PDFs in the window, you can drag one thumbnail over to the other thumbnail bar and insert a page that way. You can click on a preview icon and you can rearrange PDFs. So you'll see here, here's my, uh, if I wanna insert a page from a file, it'll let me choose another PDF So these are some cruise information I was looking up, but you saw I inserted those from screenshots right into the PDF I was working with. And now I'm rearranging the pages on the left. So, and you can even, you can delete pages from here. So I deleted those two pages. So if you click on the thumbnail, like number one is highlighted and hit the delete key, that'll remove a page. So I inserted two pages from another PDF or another screenshot even into a PDF, and then I remove them, but you can also rearrange them by dragging them. Another neat feature in preview is the ability to crop multiple PDF pages. So if you open a PDF document, it can be multiple pages. You wanna display both the thumbnails and the pages so that you can see them. Choose the tools, rectangular selection tool, and select the crop region on the page that you want to crop. So what this will do is it'll crop every page in your document to the same crop area. So basically, you select that crop region on the first page. Maybe it was a logo, or maybe there was a logo on top of the page, but there was text underneath it, and every page had that logo on it, and you don't want the logo there. Well, you could drag a square around the text section, click on the thumbnail play page after you've selected the area to, to crop on one page, hit command A or select all to select all pages, and then use the pages, the crop command. So either command K on the keyboard or tools crop, and then it will crop every document that you have. So every document, in that every page in that document will be cropped with the same section. So it would be good for cutting out a, you know, a header or footer on a document that you didn't want uh, to send on to someone else or something. And this will let you crop multiple pages at a time, right? You have to crop page one, page two, page three separately. Now, this is one of the things I mentioned that I use preview for most often. So I never scan any other way. It always works and it's just easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you open preview, you click file. You'll see an option there that says import from your printer name. When you do that, a dialog box will open. You can hit the scan button on the right. There's a box below that'll say use document feeder if you need that, if you're doing multiple pages. And then after you're done, you can click File, Save, or you can use the Share menu. So with those simple clicks, you've got a, a scan on your computer. So File, Import, Scan, and then use Document Feeder or not. So that'll be the, if you learn one thing today, if you try that, if you're scanning using another method, you'll find this is the easiest way to scan. And it always works, no matter what software has been updated. And a lot of people uh, try to scan from a scan button on the printer, and that only works about 30% of the time in my experience, where this works 100% of the time. Now, combining images with preview, 
We talked a little earlier about editing images. I removed the background from the image. I'm gonna show you now how you can combine images with preview. So if you have two preview images open, you can edit, copy, one selection, go into the other and paste. And you see there, this is that logo I filled out or that I they cleaned up earlier. I removed the background from it. So look at what a nice effect that gives on a, a page where you can see, you know, it doesn't look so good in the uh, on the grass or in the water there, but there it is up at the top. It looks kind of neat with the, you can see through the letters, you know? So that's the thing I did with the uh, instant alpha to remove the background from the image that lets it kind of show through like this. So that's some of the things you can do that could, you know, you could use this for an invitation or an, a little advertisement for a community newsletter or something and really produce some good content with just the instant alpha tool. So that's a great use for preview. Now, another thing you can do with preview is password protect any PDF file. So you may have a file that you want to send to someone that might have some sensitive information. Maybe it's about a trust or, you know, a will that you're working on or something and they, you just don't want it to be out there. So you can easily password protect it so that when the person opens it, they'll need to enter a password to access the contents of the file. So if you open the file, you want to choose file from the menu bar, choose export. You want to rename your document or image, and you, if you want to password protect it, you want to make sure that it's the PDF. So that's one thing I didn't say here specifically, but it does have to PDF, it has to be a PDF to be able to put a password on it. So again, there's a box that will show up that says permissions. That then you'll see this box that says that you can check require, require password to open document. And then you'll have to create a password and verify it for the document itself. You can then say that if you want them to print it or copy text, they have to enter a password. So you can, you can either check all those. Pretty much, I think if you have a password on the file, then you don't have to uh, password protect copying and pasting and such. But if you do want to prevent copying, and pasting and editing of the PDF, you can create what's called an owner password. And then if you check these boxes here, the person that receives the file can open it, but they can only edit or print it depending on the permissions you give them here. And to do that, if you check these boxes, they would need your owner password. So sometimes you might have a file that you want some to review, but you might not want them to edit it or even print it copy and paste from it, uh, you know, fill it out if it's a form. So basically, you can give them permission to either just open the file. And then depending on what other limits you want to put on them, you could check these boxes down here, and then create an owner password, so that they cannot do these things without having the owner password. So another image tool that's very useful with preview is resizing an image. So if you open a picture, for example, under the tools menu from the menu bar, there will be an adjust size button. So the adjust size panel contains a range of custom settings for pixels, centimeters, millimeters, points, percent, you know, all kinds of things. You can drop down, select a drop down menu to select those. In normal use, the image will scale depending on the first change you make. So if you want to make it wider or longer, but don't want it to the whole square to get bigger, there's a box that says scale proportionally. So see the box that says scale proportionally? That will resize it all at once. Whereas if you uncheck scale proportionally, you could stretch it taller, but the width would be the same or vice versa. So if you wanted it to be that wide, but just taller, you would uncheck scale proportionally because that's gonna make it taller, but it won't change the width or the height, depending on which way you're going. But scale proportionally makes it bigger altogether. Unscale, uh, we, when you have that unchecked, 
it doesn't, uh, it only goes with their height, but not, uh, it doesn't adjust the whole thing. So if it was a, a solid color or a logo that might work, but if it's people, they're going to get distorted. So you always want to have, be careful with that box because it could make things look really weird. But you'll see there, the, you can choose inches, percent, pixels, centimeters, millimeters, or points if you're doing it for a, a you know, publication that needs measurements and points. Now, another neat thing you can do that's kind of fun is add a speech bubble using preview. So again, there's a shapes button at the top of the preview when you're in the markup toolbar. You can add a speech bubble, and I'm going to show you kind of how to do that in a moment. And you can, I'll show you how to alter the color and uh, the border and everything. So basically, here's a picture of my son when we went to a, uh, his first concert, which was a KISS concert. And uh, so I've, I've gone to the markup toolbar here. There's the shape tool, and you'll see there's a little cartoon bubble. So I'm going to take the cartoon bubble, and you can then flip that around, rotate it anywhere where there's a one of the blue or green dots, you can you can modify the picture. So you'll see here, I'm gonna grab the, the little speech bubble and drag that over. And then what I wanna do, see how it's got a white border? So I'm gonna click on the border panel there and make the border white. And then I'm gonna click in it and just type some text. And again, you can change the font with the, the big A and the little A up there. Uh, but that was the the gist of editing, uh, adding a speech bubble with preview. Now, again, when you add a speech bubble, you can't revert to the version prior. So make sure you do this from a duplicate or a copy of the picture before you ruin it with something that you need the picture for later. So I actually exported this photo from photos and then edited the export. So that way it's, uh, it's not uh, you know, a destructive type edit as far as uh, you know, being able to go back and get the original. So now what I wanna do is I wanna go into preview actually and show you a couple of things that are in uh, some of the things that we've talked about in practice here. So if I go to, should I stop the share for a moment, Cheetah, and then? Absolutely. Okay, so I'll stop the share for a moment. And then I'm going to open preview and I'll share that and I'll show you some of the. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a preview document. And I'll show you some of the editing tools we looked at. All right, great. So now this is a US passport renewal application. So as you see, let's see if I go down to the bottom here. So I need to sign this. So there's a place for my legal signature. And this is for my wife. So I'm going to go to the markup toolbar here because you see, I don't see any tools for signature or anything here. So I'm gonna to go to markup. I'm gonna click the signature icon. This is where you'll see a scrolling list of all your different signatures that you've stored. So you see, I've got my wife's in here many times. So if I click on her name, so there's her name. And I go down here to where it says legal signature. So I can drag that in there. And that is a legal signature. Now for the date over here, I want to go to this toolbar here that will let me add text. So if I hit add text, I can drag that down and just type in May 25th, 2022. And then scroll down a little bit and see if there's anything. So you see this text here that I have, I can select it, but I cannot edit it because I've already saved this PDF. So once you've saved the PDF that you've put text on, you cannot edit it much. Um, there's the emergency information, so that's okay. But what I wanna do is move page four over here on the left, down under page five, 
So you see, I can edit these pages. Like what to submit with this application? I don't need that page. So I'm just gonna hit delete. And I don't need this page. And I don't need this page because it has no text on it. So I need this page. These are the three pages I need. And I've signed it here. So let's say that I had to put my initials in this box. I could click here, scroll down to find my initials and then drag them over here. Now, while I'm still editing the document, before I've saved it, I can go in and, and edit these things that I've just put in. But once I close this or save it, I could not edit this. So I can delete the signature, I can delete the date, but as you see here, I can't delete this because that was already in there. I could copy and paste it. I could look at search with it in Google. I could zoom in and zoom out. If again, we're talking about the uh, editing of uh, documents. So like, for example, here's an address, you know, National Passport Service. So here's a map. So this is again, the live text we were talking about. I just hovered over that text in a map. Here's Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If I click on that, I can get directions. There's the PO box that this document's going to go to. Let me see if I can find a website on here. Yeah, here's a website. Oh, that's an email address. So it opened my email. So let me close that. There's another phone number. So I can click on that, add it to contacts or call. So this is part of the live text that we talked about earlier. in a PDF. Now, some of the other things we talked about, I can go to file, I can go to export. And again, I can change this. Uh, sometimes somebody might not want a PDF, but they might want a JPEG of a file. I can change it to a JPEG. You know, I can choose the quality here. If it's gonna be in a magazine, I wanna change it to probably 300 pixels per inch, and then I can hit save. So I'll cancel that because I don't want to save it yet, but that's the live text feature. So you can copy text. I could go to text here. So it places a text back there and then I can hit paste. So I could copy text and paste it into another place on the document. So with many of the things you could do in a regular word processing document, you can do in pages. So again, here is the signature toolbar. And again, um, if you're on an iOS device and you're in the markup tool, you'll hit the plus sign to add a signature and it will pull up these signatures. So there you see, I've got my printed name, my sign names and initials for my wife and I. Uh, this is the text tool. If you wanna insert text, the text box will appear. That's where you can drag that around the page. You can edit it. And then if you hold the option key, you can drag it to create more fields that you can put like an X in and then drag it to a box that we, like I showed you earlier. So you can drag that around instead of having to type, uh, you know, a new document for everything or a new text field for everything. You can simply, uh, you know, use the option key and drag the X around. So you insert the X first, X, and then you can drag that to the boxes. And then if your answer is no to all these questions, if you hold the option key, you can just kind of copy that, that no text into these other fields. And again, these are the shapes we were talking about. So you can, you can insert a shape on a page. Now, this is something that might be useful if you needed to change, if you had a page that you, uh, we talked about before how you couldn't edit a PDF, but let's say you wanted to edit this PDF, even though you've already marked it up. So you could actually just create a white shape here. This would be kind of tedious, but then I could drag that up to that field and then put another text box in front of the field if I wanted to reuse a form. So you can kind of uh, work around the non-destructive editing lock-ins like that by just building a shape and kind of dragging that around to different fields. So if that makes sense, that's another thing you can do with the shapes. Now the select tool is again, how I said I wanted to crop to a certain page. 
So if I select this section of this page, and then I select the other pages in the sidebar and I go to tools, crop, do you see what happened? Every page got cropped to that little section that I selected on one page. So I can do Command Z to undo that. Jeff, do you see the address? Is that on your screen? Is yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was I had to cancel that. It was below the the view window. Yeah, but so but if you notice here, when you when you're in the regular select tool, you can copy paste. You can you can do the smart send an email to that entity. You know, so it's really powerful, and it's free, and it's built into every Mac. So, all right. so that's all right. the uh, end of that. Any other que questions about preview or the capabilities or the uh, the functions of it? Linda Farabee, can you unmute yourself and ask your last question? Uh, <clears throat> hi, Jeff. That so, last uh, action you showed us about selecting, uh, taking a, um, a shape and selecting something and then applying it to all the pages. Why would you ever, what use would that be? Um, the cropping or the shape on the page? The crop, I'm not sure. <laughs> the cropping, well, the cropping was the, yeah, the cropping might be useful. Let's say you had a document that had a logo at the top and a footer at the bottom, but you didn't want that on the document for some reason. So you could draw a square around the body of the text, select all the pages and hit tools crop and it removed the logo and the footer from every page, the header and the footer. Ah, okay. So that would be where that might be useful. That's probably the most common usefulness. If, you, if, if you've got a document that has the same information on every page and you don't need that information, if it's in the same location on every page, you could use the crop tool to crop it out of all the pages at once rather than having gotcha. to go down page by page and crop it, which also, if you crop it page by page, you're not gonna get a consistent dimensions of the crop. So every page is gonna be a different size. And when you print it, it might zoom in or zoom out depending on the size of the crop. So th that universal crop is kind of a great tool if you've got something on a page that you wanna remove for a whole series of sheets of, of gotcha. document. Thank you. Okay. You're James. welcome. And the other thing I showed you, which was the, the putting a, a box over a text field, that's kind of tedious, but it's the only way I know to edit an existing PDF is just to create blank spaces over text so you can fill it out again. Right. All right. Uh, thank you, Linda. Jane, um, Jane Wood, can you unmute yourself and ask your last question? Sure. Jeff, I'm wondering, you know, the drawing tool? Um, yes. How do you change the color of the ink on that drawing tool? So let me show you. Um, I can change borders and, you know, uh, uh, drawing objects, but that drawing tool, I, I was experimenting and couldn't figure it out. Okay, let me show you that real quick and I'll show you. A Okay, so here's a, a bookmark I was designing for a client, and this is a tool. So if I go to the markup toolbar, and I go to the sketch tool, yeah. and then I go to, so there's, the, the, there's a light tool and a, and a lighter tool, mm -hmm. and I go here and I choose red. Let's oh, see. the border, the border one. Yeah, let me get back to that. Okay, come on, toolbar. That's red. So if I go here to the border and change it to blue, it's so that's the, how you change the color. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's the border section you change. Yeah, the okay. border section is where you, you modify the color. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, James, James Corsica, can you unmute yourself and ask you a question? Hi, Jeff. Hello, Jim. Uh, I, I've used preview in a lot of different ways. It's a great tool. 
the thing that, that bothers me sometimes is um, I will get a, a script that I want to learn and I have to highlight like every other line to, to help me learn my, my, my lines. But the highlight tool doesn't work all the time, even though I'm using it on a PDF. Is there something about a PDF that's hidden or, or something that I could check to tell me whether or not it's uh, highlightable? Sorry for the invention of a word, but. No, but that makes sense. Let me just, let me just open a document and preview. I've never noticed any. Uh... All right, we have two minutes if you could. Uh... Okay, let's see here. If I go to highlight. We don't see it on your screen. Oh, uh, let me go to share again, share. One second, preview, share. Okay, so I'm, I'm dragging over this and I'm, I choose the highlight tool and I can highlight kind of at will here. And that's yeah, not that's happening. What I, that's what I wanna be able to do, but it doesn't always take. Uh, are you sure you're dragging over text rather than an image, Jim? Well, if it has a suffix of PDF, I'm assuming that it's, uh, it's... No, you are incorrect. Yeah, it could have been a JPEG that was converted to a PDF and then the text would not be selectable. Oh. Depending how they scanned it, especially if it was a scan document, a lot of people scan as JPEG. Even in preview, you could choose what format you wanna scan into. And if it's scanned into a JPEG, and then convert it to a PDF, the text would not highlight. How would you that know that? Explains, that explains a lot. Is How there a way of telling that? that? No, even if you went to the inspector, this is a view of the inspector. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. That we talked about. It's only going to show you the current document type. I don't show, I don't think it will show versions here. It to quickly answer the question because we're running out of time. If you click on, if you use like the selection tool and you click on any part of the PDF and the entire thing highlights in blue or any other color, it means it's an image. Oh, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, Jeff, we have less than uh, a minute. So I think with that, uh, we'd like to wrap this up.